my name is Raji Priyadarshi and I would like to welcome you to this brand new video on how to kick off a data governance project using IBM Information Governance Catalog. Thank you for watching this video and thank you very much for your comments and your questions in all our previous videos. So our goal is to help you as much as possible and unless you share your perspective we would not know exactly what kind of video should we present to create for you. So as we are talking about data governance, let's define data governance. The data governance definition that I got is from datacualitypro.com. So data governance refers to the overall management of the availability, usability, integrity, and security of the data employed in your enterprise. A sound data governance program must include a governing body or council, a defined set of procedures, and a plan to execute these procedures. So let's see how can we use this concept and implement data governance. So what are the building blocks for an effective data governance program? The number one is people. The project cannot succeed without the right team and the right role. As Jim Collins said in his book, Good to Great, you need to have the right people on the bus and ensure that they are sitting on the right seat. What are some of the qualities for the right people on the bus? They must have right experience. They need to know the business. They need to understand how different roles play within the organization, how data matters, they need to know about the domain and they need to be really passionate about creating a better future when you are implementing data governance. Because if you are very comfortable with the current scenario, then you might not take necessary steps which are required to create a great future. And what is also important is that you need to have a top level buy-in. No matter how great your team is, but if your leadership does not believe in data governance, the project can never succeed. So it's a very important requirement that you do have the blessings of the top level ma management. The second building block is the process. So the process must have the right components. So what are some of the compon components? How do you implement the right procedures? How do you monitor the pr processes? So you can think through and create those processes, but if you do not monitor, you would not see the benefit and very soon people will stop following those processes. You also need to have controls. What happens if there's a process failure? Who controls the decisions? What are the, some of the corrective action that we need to take in case we have a such problem? And then we also need to choose the right technology. What kind of technology are you using to implement your data governance? So a lot of it about is the process and the people, but unless you have got the right technology, everything is just a thought. Technology gives you the necessary steps, the hard steps that you need to implement to implement a data governance program. So there are a lot of great tools available. We'll be talking about IBM Information Governance Catalog which I believe is an awesome tool. We have used this with many clients to implement their data governance program and we have seen a great benefit um, long term. And the next important step in process is training. So if you've got the right people, the right process, but if you do not train them on these processes and how to use the tool, uh, what are, what, how do you, uh, what kind of decisions do you take in these specific scenarios so training is very, very critical. And the most important is the vision. We need to answer the following questions. What are we trying to do? What is our goal? And why do we need to do this? Unless you have a very strong why, many times whatever starts with great energy fizzles out in the middle because you do not have a strong why. So once you know what you have to do, why you have to do, how do you know that you have reached there? 
how do you keep track what kind of project and goals do you have and how does this project success affect you and your career so we need to answer these questions unless we have got good answers for these questions you will not be able to succeed so I'm a fitness freak I've got a pretty uh, decent health regimen um, and uh, at my age I have to be very careful because I've seen a lot of relatives not keeping good health so I have to be extra cautious so in my experience I found that implementing an effective data governance program is very similar to implementing an effective program for good health and fitness so let's see some comparisons if you don't do the right thing for your health every day it would not seem to be a crisis if I smoke a cigarette and die of cancer next minute then I would never smoke a cigarette unless I want to commit suicide in which case I can literally smoke away my last breath or I can die smoking hot but the fact is that it doesn't happen that way and that is what makes it difficult so doing the right thing is important but if you do not do the right thing on a daily basis you don't see the results very fast so that's why it's very important to choose the right actions for data governance also so let's draw some more parallels between the two goals so why do I need to take care of my health I need to take care of my health because I have a vision of me running and playing with my grandkids in my 70s similarly why do I need to go through the disciplines of data governance as an organization if the quality of our data is not accurate then we have a problem if the data is accurate we can take effective data governance processes and that can help us to make effective business decisions we can also get great insights that can help us to uncover new opportunities and take advantage at the right time also if you have the right processes for security for data quality then our risk for data security breaches gets reduced dramatically so let's talk about measurement how do you measure the status of our health we check weight daily or weekly we can monitor our blood pressure we can perform routine health assessments on a regular basis how do we measure the effectiveness of our data governance program we monitor data quality on a daily basis whenever you have got exceptions they are flagged automatically they are emailed to the right people and corrective actions are properly documented executed along with effective escalation procedure if somebody asks looks at the report and says hey where did I get this data from we can have an end-to-end -end data lineage and it can tell you exactly where this data came from so as a result if your data is accurate correct and you can know the source the trust that the organization has on your data can really improve and that can really help in making better decisions so let's talk about health again who are the people who can help with our health so the most important is myself I need to take steps nobody can run on the treadmill for me the second is the doctors the trainers the dietitians the online resources all of these are the people who can help me with my health talking about data governance who are the people who can help in creating an effective data governance program the number one is top leadership the CIO the CIO needs to believe in data governance and its benefit for the long-term goals of the organization the CIO must sponsor and evangelize data governance without CIO and the executive sponsorship the data governance program is bound to fail the second set of people are the data governance leads so who is the overall leader for the data governance program is very very critical that you have a strong leader who really believes then we have the data stewards who own the data who have got good business knowledge about the data then we need data security professionals 
We also need data integration and data warehousing professionals who can provide the right data and look at the data quality. And we also need other IT resources. So let's talk about what are the necessary actions to achieve good health. Creation of a health plan, regular exercise, quality diet, sufficient and restful sleep, knowledge of stress reduction strategies, regular interpersonal positive interactions for emotional well-being. Now let's look at data governance. What are the necessary actions for effective data governance? You must have a data governance plan which is thought through. We need to understand the goals, create a strategic goal and tactical steps to reach there. You need to choose the right technology to support data governance because the technology is what makes it possible. It starts with the belief, thoughts and plan but ultimately the technology is what gives you the, the processes to make it possible. Then you identify the first set of data domains and understand the sequence for kicking off the data governance initiative. So you really need to understand what are we going to do. You can't boil the ocean. You have to find the most effective, a small domain which can really impact the business. You make that domain successful for data governance and you can scale from there. So remember the rule, think big, start small and then scale fast. Then you need to assemble the right team for each data domain. You have to make sure that the right kind of training is provided for each team member, for the tool and they already know the business, but you need to really make sure that the team understands the vision, the steps and they get the right training. Then you need to mentor the team to implement the data governance implementation steps. So they get training, but unless they know how to actually implement it in their specific scenario, again, you can fail. And then once they have started, you got to monitor the progress and provide feedback and guidance for course correction. Very, very important. So let's look at this diagram. Okay. So this talks about the different components. So as we talked, you need to first form the information governance team and then you need to define the security in the workflow flow roles. Who is the author? Who is the publisher? Who are going to be the approvers? And then you need to define the terms. So what are terms? We talked about a data domain and I'll give a very specific example and within the domain we have to specify the terms. You need to make sure that you define the category so all your domain should be in hierarchical order with the right kind of categories. And we'll show this and it will become much more clear with a very specific example. So in this second part of the presentation, we'll focus on how to implement data governance project plan using IBM information management projects. For data transformation and integration, we'll use data stage. For data security, we use Optim and Guardian. For data quality, we'll use information analyzer and quality stage. In this section, we'll focus on implementing business glossary and information governance policies and rules within information governance catalog. So we'll not be focusing on data stage, quality stage, information analyzer, optimum or guardian. We'll just focus on information governance catalog. So let's focus on the implementation steps. Identify the goals of the project and the data domain to focus on. As I said earlier, you need to very, be very careful. You cannot boil the ocean. So choose a small data domain which can have a critical impact, but it is not very big. Then you identify the data stewards, authors, approvers, publishers for the domain. Who are the people who would be on the hook for the RACI matrix? So RACI stands for R-A-C-I, Responsible, Approver, Consulted, and Informed. So in this example, we'll look at a domain called Location. So Location is very, very critical domain for a lot of companies. And 
in this specific example, we'll focus on location and let us assume that John and Jane are the data stewards for this domain and Jack is the approver for the changes. So what do we need to do to make it possible? So first of all, we ident need to identify the attributes for this domain. So we need to define a category called location and within that we choose these attributes. So the attributes are location identifier, address line one, address line two, city, state, zip, country, latitude and longitude. So we'll just focus on location identifier and once you know exactly how to handle location identifier, you can repeat the process for other attributes. So first step is how do you define a location identifier? So we can define location identifier as a unique numeric or alphanumeric value that can uniquely identify a location. Okay. Now once you have defined it, so this is just an example, the business users need to define this. And this definition goes within the term definition within information governance catalog. Now, once we define the terms, what are the next steps? So we need to define the policies and the rules, but let's also understand one more thing. Within an organization, there might be multiple systems with location information. Each location table might have its own identifier. How do we link these columns to this definition of the term? We can link by selecting the corresponding information asset for those columns within specific tables to the terms being defined. So this is how all of these IBM tools, they come handy. So once you have imported the metadata from those specific tables, the metadata is specifically defined within the metadata repository. And by connecting the metadata for that identifier within that specific table to the term location identifier, you can establish a link that location identifier is the concept and the location identifier or ID for that specific table is a specific implementation. So if you got tens systems for location, each with their own identifier, all of these can be linked to the same term. Now what happens if the location identifier has got a different definition for different business domains. So in that case, you can have different categories and within each category, you can define a location identifier specific to that category only. So that way you can customize a location identifier for each business purpose. So what are the next steps? So for each term, we can assign it to a class IBM governance catalog comes with a built-in classification. We can assign the terms to a class provided by IBM or we can create our own class. Once we are done with that, so I could choose a class called identifier or we'll see, I don't exactly remember what are the classes available, but we can choose. And in the demo, you'll see how to do that. The next step is that we need to define the specific policies that would govern this term. So what are policies? Policies are documented guidelines that cover the term. So for example, for email, you could have some standard uh, policy and then each policy is enforced using rules. So once you create a policy, you need to create, define the rules. So you need to define the governance and the data rules for the term. The data rules can be created within information analyzer and it can be reused within data stage or information governance catalog. So you can just use it once, create it once and use it multiple times. The rules can be used to validate or invalidate a term. So once we have filled up these values for the term, we can save it and send it for approval. Till the time the changes are approved, the terms are called candidate terms. Once they're approved and published, they can be reused and associated with other information assets. So this is the broad theory about 
how to kick off an information governance program using IBM information governance catalog. In the next section, we'll show you our demo on how exactly to do this. So thank you for watching this section. Look forward to seeing you in the next section. Hello, welcome to the demo of information governance catalog. So over here we start with coming to the launch pad screen on your browser so as you can see that you have got this um, address that you use for launch pad which is the host name the port number uh, slash IBM forward slash IIS forward slash launch pad once you come over here you gotta choose information governance catalog so I've already logged in if you have if I was not logged in it would have asked me for my user ID and password and since I have already logged in I don't need to do that so right now I'm logging in, in as a data steward so what are we going to talk about right now is what are the essential steps that you need to take based upon the presentation that you saw earlier so step number one is to define the categories now what exactly is a category so if you have got a lot of data within your organization and if your goal is to make sure that you govern it properly you have to divide the entire information set into different groups and each of these groups are called categories so for example in your organization you could have a category for location you could have a category for equipment you could have a category for uh, driver so there are a lot of different uh, categories so for now what we'll do is we'll choose uh, create a category so the way you do that is you have to come over here choose glossary development and then in, you choose glossary and you can create a category so I believe I've already created a category for location but I'll also create a category for equipment so so I come over here and I say equipment I can choose a parent category but since for me this is just the, the top level I'm not going to choose one I can also describe equipments within the organization why is it complaining it looks like I might have made a typo no I don't know English Somehow it's not liking. I guess equipments can't be plural. I can put a comment um, right now. I, I chose I, once I do that. I just click save and close. So now that I have created a category, so I already had a category for location and I just created a category for equipment now the second thing that I will do is how to create a term so I'm a data steward so I do not have the right to publish or approve a term but I can create a term so my role is also as an author so once I create a term and I send it for approval the approver is going to approve it and I'll get a message once I get the message then I can publish that term so what exactly is a term a term is a definition of either a tape of, of any uh, information so for example if I've got the location category within location I could have multiple different terms so for example how do you define a location 
you could have attributes like location identifier address line 1 address line 2 uh, the zip code latitude longitude so you could define all of that and once you define these terms these terms could be implemented within the organization in many different ways so you could have multiple applications within the organization each having their own locations and each might be having their own primary key so what you could do is the the term location identifier could be linked to each of the primary keys for each of those location tables so that is how you connect the physical data model to the logical term so we'll see how that is done okay so let's create another term so I let me see if I've already created one but I want to create a location identifier parent category I'm going to choose location apparently looks like I did not create okay so what I'll do since I've looks like I've not created somehow I thought so, so I, w I will come over here and create a new category called location there's no parent category and this is this is the this is the category for all location data within the organization and I save okay, close. so once I go back to the term again I was trying to create location identifier location identifier okay I choose uh, location so I had just created so I just choose location okay so this is my location identifier is my term within the category location and I can give this term identifies a unique location okay so the status field by default is candidate if I am an author um, so I'll leave it as candidate and once I'm done I can send it for approval so right now I'm just going to click save and create another term so what I will also do is I'll create another term called address line one I could create just address but for just for the sake of completeness I'm going to call it address line one and this is also under location And I give the description this describes the first line address okay as you can see this is a candidate term I just save and close okay so now as you can see we have created a category categories and two terms now what are the next steps so the next steps are to identify the policies and the governance rules governance rules and the what data rules are they going to be linked to and what physical assets are they going to be linked to okay so let's see how to do that 
So I come over here in glossary, I can create an information governance policy. So I will call it uh, uh, address valid but I want to also see if there's already a policy existing but I do want to show you how to create a policy because as data stewards you will have to create a policy. So I will see uh, call it the address must be a valid address so I can type it out and I can give the description um, this could be the parent policy I'm right now I'm not going to give you the description um, but I do encourage you that whenever as as data stewards your job is to make sure that you Pr uh, follow the right best practices for your governance so please don't do the shortcuts that I'm doing and the reason why I'm not feeding in all the values because I want to make this video as short as possible so without making it very very lengthy so my goal is to give punch as much value in this video in a shortest possible time because I don't want to take a lot of your time uh, so I did not choose a parent policy but this is how I save so I have created a policy now. So what I'll also do is I'll just wa I want to see if there are some other policies. Uh, so I come to policies and rules, and I want to see. So there's a policy called uh, address must be validated and verified against postal reference code. So this is already existing. Okay. So what are we learning? For? So make sure that your policy is are descriptive telling you exactly what is being done what is what has to be done as a result of this policy so policy is must be definitive and it must be descriptive okay so once you create the policy how do you enforce these policies do you enforce these policies through governance rules and data rules so we'll be seeing that so I already have this policy called address must be validated so I would like to connect this policy to the term that we had created earlier called address line one so let's see how to do that so I come over here and I go to terms and I search for term that I just created called address So I have created an address line one over here as you can see and then as you can see this is over here I need to edit so I come over here and I click edit so this allows me to populate additional values so as I said earlier you need to make sure that you have got the right short description long description so these are pretty important uh, aspects of this so as I told you I'm I'm not doing it because I want to uh, shorten that entire time span but you should definitely you're strongly encouraged to do that so let's go to uh, rules and policies so you so I want to make sure that there are some rules that I want to assign to this term so I come over here I search for address you see so that policy uh, and rule you can put it over here so this is now this is linked my address line one is linked to that policy that, that I just showed you okay now what other things I could do is it's also important um, to identify the classes so there are some classes which uh, are coming in as you buy information governance catalog but sometimes you have to create your own classes so I will just see if there's an address I do believe there's something called address classification but I'll just come over here um, so apparently it's not here so I, I would have to choose it uh, choose it right now uh, 
Um, so this is our, so one of the things that you can see is a classification rule. This is not the actual class. So in classification rules, uh, you can either have a business classification which just gives you the business term and the data classification is actually linked to the data also. So this one I wanted to be a business classification um, which would be linked to data later on but for now I'm just going to choose business classification. Uh, but what I could also do is since I want to make it a short one I can also short circuit everything and just choose da data classification. So just make sure in your process whether it's just a business term with, which would be linked to data or it is uh, a business term which is not going to be linked to data or if it's an actual data term. So in this case this is a business term but I do want to link it to data so to be safe I'm going to choose data classification. Okay. Now coming back I also want to make sure that I give the names of the data stewards. So in, in my install I just have one user ID that's me <laughs> and that's the administrator I'm the approver author all of this but in your company you just have to make sure that for the term you need to define who's the data steward so for example if uh, uh, Jane is the data steward for l location and for address line where her name should be put over here okay so that way uh, when it is linked uh, the email address would, her email address would be linked to this and whenever somebody is viewing this term they would know exactly whom to ask questions if they have any doubts okay so these are important things now coming back to uh, if we go down so let's see what all so I can connect to more information um, let's see and so the lot more things that you can do but let's what I would suggest is couple of things which are very very important um, so you can identify what rule the address is governed by uh, you can put the involved with rule over here um, you can also talk more about the data source so one of the things I'm going to just see what happens if I choose a business classification and does it make any changes so now um, So over here you can give all the definitions and the terms. Privacy requirements, location, uh, I don't think it's very uh, critical from a privacy standpoint. Uh, so I would say minimum. Uh, if it was a social security number then I need to put it very sensitive. Similarly security level I can define um, whatever is the security level. If, um, level 1, level 2 um, so and then valid values you can put all the valid values over here you could put examples usage um, type so if you click on type it can tell you exactly if it's a primary value none or secondary and then what is very important which is something that you have to uh, define is what are the associated terms so if there are terms which are linked to each other uh, or which is a if you've got a parent child concept so for example uh, location address is is a type of customer identifier so you have to give all of those things so that is very specific to the business uh, what are the terms which are related to each other you can put over here if there's a synonym um, you can put over here if there are multiple synonyms you can put over here um, if it uh, has got different types, if is off, has a, all of these you can define. Uh, so it really helps you to get a clear term. Um, you can also assign it to assets. So this is uh, also very important. You need to make sure that everything that you're doing on the term is actually linked to a physical asset. And sometimes it's not required, sometimes it's required, uh, but it's a good practice so that you know that hey uh, this is my definition and these are the actual columns which refer which are related to this term so uh, let's see what I can do is I come over here and I choose uh, 
a database column and I come over here let's see so I've got a uh, couple of different uh, ones for address so let's see so it, it is using some level of checks so I've got valid base address address let's see which is the one which I'm going to use Yeah, so this is the table that I had created earlier. Uh, the table was called address and the column was called address one. So this is what I'm going to use. So I just click this and so this is how you will be linking a term to a specific column. Now you have to really coordinate with your data analyst or your ETL developer or your data quality expert because that those are the actual technical details you have to coordinate because as business data steward you own the data but the actual technical details of what columns are linked either you might be the expert on that or you have to work with an expert um, you can also assign it to other external assets so something which is not in the repository if I, I want to ex connect it to an external asset so for example if I have got uh, an address file that comes from a customer which is not in my system so I can define that also so once you do all of that uh, so as you can see I have uh, linked the policy I have linked the assets uh, and um, what else have I done so that should be it so once I save it I can say it's also a good practice to give all the whatever you did so I can say added um, the rules and linked to the information asset colon um, address column and I click OK once I have done that then I can send for approval so as a data steward my job is done once I send for approval so this is important uh, so I send for approval and I can also make a comment I've added additional information for these term for the term please approve and I click OK so who is the whoever is the approver he will get an email and he will approve it or he can send it back to draft in which case you will have to make changes and he has got the ability to give his comments and if he approves it then you have to publish it once you publish it that would be available all across your information assets and all across the tool set which is information analyzer you can data stage all of that so one thing which I would like to say is that how exactly does the approval workflow work so there are you actually as a data steward do not care about it but I will tell you uh, there are two or three different options so what I have used and what I believe is the simplest way is the workflow option that is available in IGC so you can set it as an administrator okay there is also you have got on the back end the other options uh, using stewardship center uh, business process manager so there's a full layer of event driven backend for workflow on the back for example any kind of a, if there's a data quality exception or any modification it can create an event it can send an email 
so there are some options so I have chosen a pretty simple option of workflow within IGC and that should be good enough so just to see um, what have we covered so we covered how to create a category we covered how to create terms we looked at how to create a policy how to create a governance rules I did not actually show you how to create a governance rules but um, typically when you create a rule you have to coordinate with your um, with your uh, data quality expert and the ETL guy and uh, so together you can create a, a rule that can be linked to a policy okay um, so that's uh, so in this case if I really want to uh, see the rules so when you go to the policy I'm going to show you this because I don't want to leave uh, this so I will actually show you how a rule looks um, and then how it's implemented is not going to be covered but just understand that the data rule so there are three things okay and people can get confused okay what are those three things the first thing is a policy a policy is a definition of exactly what should be done what should not be done okay but policy itself can't be enforced so you enforce the policy through rules now there are two kinds of rules the governance rules which is defined over here and the data rules which is actually implemented also on information analyzer and data stage okay and they all can be linked so I will show you exactly how to find that out but to create a rule on the data stage slash information analyzer side it would be better to work with them okay and so a couple of quick questions uh, what happens if uh, the same location identifier has got different meanings for different areas within your organization so whenever you have got situations like that you can create the same term location identifier but you can put it in different category so right now this is in location category if you've got a location identifier within customer and it has got a totally different meaning I'll create a term location identifier within the category of customer and I can give my own definition totally independent of this definition that we have created okay so that allows you to have different variations for the definition for the same term okay now let's see as I said how to look at um, policies so I'll just come and look at the policy so I don't want to create so sorry <laughs> come over here I look at just policies so I'll just search uh, for address or maybe it's So as you can see, uh, this is I put address governed by rules. So I come over here. So this is my policy and the rule. Basically, this is the rule, and they have got the similar term because you can do a search on both. Now these are the I've got. Is it a hard or soft condition? It's a soft condition. Is it, this is used for validation? Um, what happens if there is an exception? Uh, so you have to resolve any kind of an exception. Uh, before the data is included in master records okay the exception must be delivered to data stewards for resolution before acceptance um, how do you validate uh, you can use using postal verification software so data stage quality stage has got uh, you can uh, you can validate it using the AVI interface that is possible you could also use a third party um, address verification uh, if you are using um, information server AVI then it's easier to link so that's why it's a better idea to use the same tool set IBM is pretty good because everything is all integrated and then uh, as you can see I've got a couple of uh, data rules 
So this is a symbol for data rules. So these have been implemented within information analyzer. So as you can see, um, I'm going to just, I had taught, I had mentioned about three things, a policy, um, a governance rule and a data rule. So let's see what are we talking about, okay? So this is a governance rule, okay? Address must be verified and these are the data rules, okay, which are actually implemented on the assets. These are the referencing policies. So I could reference multiple policies. So over here, I've got information governance domain policies. I've got customer data policies. I've got know your customer. So this rule implements all of these policies. So I hope it is clear the difference between policies, governance rules, and data rules. So thank you very much for your time. Uh, please share your thoughts and comments, and uh, please keep on encouraging us. It's because of your love and support that uh, I have got the passion to create those uh, regular videos for your benefit. Thank you guys, and talk to you soon. Take care. As I said earlier, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and leave your comments below. I'm really interested in seeing how it benefits you and what your thoughts are. Because the more you share your interest, the more knowledge we'll have to provide the right kind of training videos for you. So see you on the other side.